Welcome back to another episode. We are up in the NYC, my old stomping grounds where I grew up this week, and speaking with Charlene Brown. Now, Charlene is all about getting your website architecture in alignment with your business and brand. She can help you create the strategy that allows you to build sustainability as part of your foundation. Charlene, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Enrique. I'm so excited that we're finally meeting and talking. <laughs> yes, it's been a, a, a work uh, a, in place for a little bit, and we're finally getting here. And folks, we're going to be talking specifically about helping you with your design. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about you, Charlene. Yeah, so hi, everyone. I am Charlene Brown, the brand misfit. I help my clients understand how to use their websites so their websites can actually place them as the experts that they truly are. There's nothing more frustrating than having a site that you don't even promote because you don't know how to use it or you're not comfortable with it. Well, I'll tell you, I'm uncomfortable on this side because you just spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> and which is the reason why I have you speaking about this very topic today, uh, not only because I believe you are the expert in here, but also because I know that a lot of people listening, uh, both on the leadership side and the entrepreneur side, have a lot to gain by listening to this. And I wanted to start out the conversation with a simple thing of what's the purpose of a website? Because I'll tell you, many of us have it, but don't know why we have it. Yes. And and a lot of it is because you hear experts tell you, you need a site, you should get a site, but they don't really go into the, the value of what the website should be for you. And number one, it should help you create and build credibility, especially online. There's so many people that do the same thing, depending on what industry you're in. It's always going to be a bunch of folks who do something similar to what you do. So now how do you really stand out? What better way than your website? You're not fighting algorithms. You're not doing all those kind of things. You get to tell your story on your own terms, on your own platform. And that's exactly what the website should be helping you do. So that's where the credibility comes in. No, and I love that because it truly does represent you in totality while you're sleeping. And that's the best uh, thing I could think of a website to be able to do to speak for you when you can't. Now, there's a lot of, you mentioned algorithm in social media. That's a huge thing. We're always trying to figure out how to overcome some of these changes. Websites limit that and allow you to present yourself in a good way or uh, where you can speak the loudest, but there are so many people that have challenges with these things. And out of all the people that come to you for your services, what would you say is the greatest mistake you see? The greatest mistake folks are leaving themselves out of the conversation. They're promoting their services. They promote their products, but then they don't say who they are. Uh, we can't keep pretending that we are larger entities than what we really are. At the end of the day, even if you are promoting just a, a business name that is not your name, technically you're still a part of that. And as such, people want to know who's behind this logo. Where did this business come from? So at the very least, I've noticed people don't even share their journey. They're not taking the opportunity that their website gives them to really pour it on. And when I say pour it on, don't make it totally all about you, but allow people in. Allow people to know like this is your passion. You Even if you're selling a product, why do you believe in this product so much? That's where a lot of the testimonials come in, but also that's where a lot of the demo videos come in. So you can show like, look, this is why it works. This is why I believe in it. I can see it doing this. I can see it doing that. But if you're not even putting yourself or putting a voice behind that product so people can really connect to it, then what's the per what's the point of having that? What's the purpose? Uh, so one thing that I that I realized people leave themselves out of the equation and they don't have a game plan. They don't have a plan of maintenance. They don't have a plan of promotion. They don't have a plan of of um, just updating, updating in the sense of these are new things that I'm doing. These are new places that I'm on. These are new shows that I'm on. They're not promoting anything on their website. They're leaving it so bare that folks have to now 
hunt all over the place. Your website should kind of put everything together in one spot for them. Even your social media, if you're if you are there, then give it give a page or space so people can see that oh you're over here too, you're over there too. Great, but they don't have to hunt for you. You giving them everything in in that totality, but in a planned um um space. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense and leads right to the next question that I have. But before I ask that question, you you mentioned design mm -hmm. is one of the things that we don't consider. You mentioned maintenance. Oh my goodness, how many websites out there right now are out of date? Yes, have pictures of you five years ago. You know, just things that should normally be part of an evolution. And I like the way you picture the website because it's almost like the website grows with you. Yeah. It it is it should be like side by side, reflecting you throughout the whole endeavor as as, as whatever you may want to be. But it should be up to date. And maintenance is definitely one thing that a lot of people do not consider. Design is another. So why is design so important to our message? The design is important to the message because one technology evolves. So the way you are presenting it, that's where the design comes in. You're presenting your message in a certain way. So as you're doing that, you want to present it in the best a form of technology. And you want to make it as simple for people to digest what you're giving them. And you want to allow as many people as possible to have access to the actual content. So your words, if you have audio on there, you want everyone, no matter what they might be going through. And when I say that, I mean, accessibility wise, not everyone will see your website the same. So you want to give as many opportunities as you can on your website. So everyone who can um, will actually be able to digest what you're sharing. And the easier you make it, the better, right? Why have people hunting for your about page? Why people? Why have people guessing what your services are? Or you have services on there, but there's no descriptions. Or you don't have anything that's um, valuable in the sense that even on, on search engines, they can't categorize it because you didn't take the time to categorize your own content. So you're not telling people, hey, this is how I would like you to see it. This is where everything is. And just like when we go into a grocery store, right? There are places and aisles for a reason. And why are they doing that? They're making it easy for us to find things. So that's what you want on your website. You want to create aisles. You want to create categories. You want to create sections, departments, like a like a, uh, a mall where you where people know, oh, okay, this is where I need. I want to go here. I need counseling. This is where they have it. I want to go here. If you're leaving it up to them and people get frustrated enough, then they won't come back. And that's not what you want. You want to drive more and more people, not just new faces, but you want to definitely have return faces come to your site. Oh, you paint that picture of the of the grocery store. <clears throat> and I'm like, they know how to put it to get me. Because every time I go down <laughs> to this grocery store, I start grabbing things. <laughs> And it's just like, I did not come in here for this, but <laughs> they know how to match color. Mm -hmm. They know how to put what, what pops out at you. Oh, don't get me on that two, four, because then I'm, I'm in there. <laughs> I'm all yeah. in that basket. And um, it's not, it's all, it's all designed scientifically as well. There's a little science to that. Not even a little, a lot. And when we think of investment, that's what they're doing. They're investing in the research. They're investing in, in the testing. And a lot of us, we don't test our websites. We don't research enough to say, you know what? What's the historical traffic that's been coming? What's going on? How have people been moving on my site? How can I position things differently? So if they only um, go to half of the page, how do I get the things at the bottom to pop out at them and, and entice them? to scroll down further that's where um that that testing comes in and that's where uh, so many of us are missing when we're creating these websites especially you know you just want to have something up and going you still need to come back to it and like you said as we evolve so should our businesses and our websites 
we never have something that stays the same thing as day one launch, right? We always grow. And that's exactly what your website should be reflecting your growth. Absolutely true. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of people with 1989 websites <laughs> out there. I might be in the 95 era, but <laughs> we're, we're about to fix that. Um, well, you talk about things that, that we need to consider and you mentioned, you know, do it yourself website. You, uh, Everybody tries to uh, minimize the cost, mm -hmm. <laughs> initial cost of getting into something like a website, because we know that it could go from a Fiverr encounter to a full on, you know, five, 10, $15,000 website, you know, it, it, it can span that whole gamut right there. And so people are trying to minimize that cost and just put up whatever they feel needs to be out there. We do a disservice when we just go our own way without the knowledge. So what's one thing that you feel people need to consider before they go down the route of do it yourself? They need to really think about what is the goal, even if it's that one goal out of that year, what is that one goal that that website should be helping them to accomplish? If it's them building their email list, if it's them selling tickets to a special event that's coming up, they, even if they're trying to sell a book, they should be positioning their website in a way that will assist them to complete those goals. And that's where people drop the ball. They don't attach their business goals to their websites. They do a lot of last minute build outs. They do a last minute, oh, I need a landing page really quickly, but nothing, the website does not become part of that yearly planning, which doesn't even make sense. If you know like you've been planning these huge events, you've been planning so many amazing um, opportunities for people to work with you, why not also plan it into your budget and into your timeline of, oh, the website should be updated at this time. Oh, we need a new page. That should go up at this time. Everybody can't continue to wait till a week out or a day out or a month out and say, oh, okay, now I need a page. Absolutely not. That should always be part of the planning process. And that's where we, we always drop the ball a lot. I seldom see any of the marketing folks <laughs> in the meetings, when you're talking about future this and future that, that can actually help them plan out how they're going to position you as a company to the, to, to get the best out of your efforts. And folks, if you ain't listening to this, good Lord, I tell you, uh, if you have a company and you have a marketing team and you're not in, in investing them into your process of growth in your company, yeah, you're going to miss out. And so that's a great, great comment there. We are all not design savvy. Obviously, I'm telling you right now, I'm not. But when you struggle in those areas, it's because you just don't know. And so what's your best advice to those struggling with design challenge websites outside of, you know, making sure that it matches your company goals? Well, definitely do not overthink the, the design process, but make sure that you're putting elements that will help you accomplish these goals. A lot of times we get templates that don't fit what we need. And if you're not design savvy, it's okay to bring in someone who is, but have the game plan for them. Don't just tell them, hey, I would like one, two, and three, but then don't talk them through why you want one, two, and three. What's more important out of those three? Because you, just because you give them three elements or three aspects, you still want to say out of all three of those aspects, what's most important to you? And that allows them also to focus on when they're designing what they need to be making first, second, and third. And it's because of, based on how your clients move, based on how most people move on a website, your most important should be at the top. Your most important should be part of an exit pop-up. Your most important should be part of a video, something that allows people to stay on long enough to engage and understand the information you're sharing with them. You know, uh, as you're mentioning these things, I'm thinking about websites and 
there's what we think should be on the website. And then there's what you know should be on the website. Mm -hmm. Those things don't necessarily match all the time. Communication is key if you want a good product because you want your intent to be known. But if you are not clear in that, then your web designer is not going to be clear either. So for those of you venturing down the website, build and design, communicate, 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 have it something that you are happy that will that happen and happy that others are seeing and also allow that thing to grow with you um, as we are going through all the things that you're t telling us. There are things that escape us in terms of what the website priority should be and what are the your top three because I don't want you to give all of them but the top three things that you say most definitely this should be on your website definitely more about you you should have a call to action to build an email list not just give something away but it should attach itself that when someone opts in to say they want to download that should be pushing that name to an email list and you should be welcoming them into your email community that's a that's a must. And why? Because your email list is going to be more important than anything else that you have. So start building that as soon as possible. And three, you need analytics on there. It, it sounds weird, but the reason why you need the analytics is so you can see how people are moving around. What are the most um, popular pages that they're going to? What do you need to fix up that people may stay on for a short amount of time? Um, that allows you to really see how can you best serve the folks that come to your site and what type of content that are they driving to? Such important things. And you're mentioning I'm over here like, yep, and yep, and yep. So many things to learn in terms of website design. So many things to learn in terms of website maintenance. And most definitely about the purpose of why you have a website because there are just some people that are not ready for a website although they want to throw something on there sometimes that could actually hinder you in terms of business if, if people cannot navigate that thing right or even know how to get to what they're looking for so be careful folks that are trying to you know do it yourself uh, folks that are trying to uh, skirt the cost. There are people who do great packages. Charlene is one, and I'm about to uh, let you take your time right now. And for those that are listening, have got some good education in terms of the their website and are willing and are, are, are wanting to reach out to you. How would they do that? They can definitely reach me on my website, Brooklyn Custom Designs, B-K-L-Y-N, customdesigns.com. And if they're ready for a strategy session with me, that's where I actually sit down. We go through their website and we, t we pick three top things that they need to start looking and working on immediately. Uh, they can book that strategy session with me again on my website, brooklyncustomdesigns.com forward slash strategy. Uh, and I also have VIP days that will be launching for 2023, uh, but I'll be having a special offer coming out in December. So definitely make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn because I'll be promoting a lot there and I will be sharing a lot of that on my shows, Real Talk, live podcast and sip and chat. And I also have another show create um, incredible vulnerability. All of those, we really launched those on LinkedIn, but they're also can be found on YouTube and Facebook. Absolutely. And now I'm, I'm a fan of all those shows. I pop in there every once in a while to make sure that I give my support. Uh, Charlene, thank you so much for taking this time to get us right about websites and our design and all of that jazz folks. I'm a half all that information as part of the show notes, the video, and there is a QR code. If you're watching this, you can just scan that and get right to the session and we'll make sure to have all that. So you can get 
a hold of Charlene. Charlene, thank you so much for thank taking you. this time to be with us and uh, and chat about web design and how important it is to us both per both personally and as business owners because that's really where it hits us if we don't got it right. Folks, today's episode is sponsored by Triad Leadership Solutions. If you've enjoyed this episode and learned something interesting about the topic covered today, make sure to subscribe and let us know by leaving a comment right now. We're always looking for new ideas and guests that we can add to our show. So if you know someone or have a topic that you would like for us to feature or discuss on the show, or hey, sponsor <laughs> us uh, and our show, we love to hear about it by emailing us at Triad Leadership Solutions at gmail.com and be sure to tune in next week for another episode where we dissect leadership from another angle. And as we like to end the show, success to you.